So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the cross engineering approach to test, to do resilience testing for containers running on top of a cluster. So, uh, who am I? I'm uh, Alex Ledine from uh, Codefresh. You're welcome to follow me on Twitter or Medium. I publish their blogs. I'm chief of research for Codefresh. It's a CI CD platform for Docker and Kubernetes. I also uh, established and lead a couple open source projects. One of them is Pumba, I'm going to talk about today. And the other one is Micro CI, it's minimalistic CI for Docker. Uh, I'm uh, working with Docker for the last uh, two and a half, three years, and also start to work with Kubernetes um, on, on private clouds, enterprise, AWS, G Cloud. And uh, let me start with try to define a need for, for uh, cause engineering practices. Uh, we all built system to support uh, business needs. And uh, more complex business processes we need to automate and uh, to integrate with the more complex system we are building. Also over the time, uh, the solution tends to, to become even more complex with addition of integrations and changing requirements and updates to infrastructure and networking and security. And you know, over the lifetime of, of the Project, uh, different people write it. There are different trends in technology and architecture. So the story becomes really complex. And uh, what my point is uh, building software that unintentionally becomes complex is easy. Okay, we all did it in the past, we doing it. But it's, it's hard to build the software complex software that they maintain all good abilities. And when there are too many moving parts, like changing requirements and understand infrastructure, networking, and integration with external services and API that constantly updating, it's almost mission impossible to avoid failures. And even respectful and Big companies that they know how to do continuous integration, continuous testing, that they have very, very huge QA departments, a lot of automation tools, and you know, very strict release process, they, they still fail. Some notable failures for, for last year, like uh, IBM Cloud in the January, the, the small change in UI actually disallow uh, cl cloud users to use IBM Cloud services for several hours. GitLab, it was a human error when during database maintenance, an uh, employee uh, by mistake delete some data directory and so some data was lost for forever. Uh, we all remember AWS S3 failure in February when a lot of services suddenly stopped working, like Trello and Slack and others. It was also a due human error. Some engineer tried to debug the problem and just typed their own comment and uh, S3 went down. Uh, from, there was also a bug uh, in Microsoft Azure, some power failure in a data cluster, and one of the data cluster ca caused problems with Azure, some Azure services for several hours. There, if you're going to, to, there are some nice sites that where you can see like uh, uh, outage reports, and live outage reports, for example, for AWS. You can see there was, was a spike on February 28, but if you go up, you can see that, you know, it's, a, it's fresh data. You can see a lot of services like EA and uh, 2K and GitHub and Google Drive all fails constantly. Just a moment. <coughs> my presentation. Okay. So as, as engineers, we would like to build software which is a high quality software. By high quality, I mean all aspects of software, like software that uh, 
has no functional bug that has a top performance, a resilience to failure, easy to modify and update and maintain. And uh, every new project, we start with this nice picture in mind. We think we will select the best technology right now, the most suitable technology we built. This time we built it right, but over time things become more complex and we fail again and again. But we learn stuff. I, I'm optimistic. We learn stuff and we start to apply new practices. We get more robust technologies that help us to build better software, even not, maybe not ideal, but better. So what we can do to achieve better quality in wide sense? Can, of course, we can more testing help us, can more better monitoring help us? like uh, doing all kinds of testing integration, functional performance, or maybe applying log analytics, monitoring alerts, or failure prediction techniques based on AI. <coughs> yes and no. So yes, you, you need to do it, but you need to do it smart. And uh, there is a chance that too much test will slow down your business agility, slow down your release processes. So you need to be smart here. And uh, if we are thinking about mo most of the tests today that people use, they, they are focused mostly on, on performance, on functionality, on security, but less, less on failures or less on, on uh, partition tolerance. Since a uh, uh, continuous integration environment and QA environments, well, they are different from production environment, it's hard to reproduce the failures and people not doing this. So uh, another point is that uh, building distributed software today is much easier than ever. We have this uh, new concept of microservice architecture, then you build your system, highly distributed system composed from multiple uh, uh, microservices uh, linked together, meshed together into single communication. And we have a lot of technologies that allow us to, to achieve, to build this kind of software like Docker and Kubernetes and public, yes, a lot of open source coming, a lot of tools coming from Linux. Uh, still, we know how to build and scale and deploy and maybe even monitor this highly distributed system, which takes me to the next slide. You, as mentioned in some previous talks, you, there is concept of cup theory where you, you look at your system as a you know, distributed uh, shared data system and you, you need to choose either it's co uh, between consistency, availability or partition tolerance. If you are building distributed system, by, by definition, we are choosing partition tolerance. So this is one of the system characteristics we are choosing when we are going to, to run our application on, on network, on cluster. And in my belief that chaos engineering princip principles and practices can help you actually to test for partition tolerance, to, 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 to fill this gap, which is currently is not filled by most of the tool. So what is kind uh, chaos engineering? Uh, uh, this term was initially in the software, was initially introduced by Netflix. They, they were building a scalable video streaming service on Amazon Cloud, and they come with this term. And the idea was, you know, fail, fail, failures happen. So you need to embrace the failure. You need to embrace and control the failure and see how your system behaves. Uh, so chaos engineering defines an empirical, since it's engineering is defined an empirical approach to resilience testing of a distributed system, uh, where you define your chaos experiment and you start with uh, some normal or expected state of the system by monitoring it, by, by monitoring system metrics or some business uh, metrics, and then pseudo randomly inject different kind of faults into your system by terminating uh, virtual machines, by killing containers, uh, changing uh, network behavior. And then again, try to discover sec 
ser uh, service system weaknesses uh, by deviation from expected or steady state of the system. And the harder it is to disturb the steady state, the more confidence we have in behavior. Okay, then we... So, of course, it's possible to practice uh, cause testing man manually, but uh, there's, we are software engineers and we like automation tools, and Netflix comes with a nice automation tool called Chaos Monkey, and later they, they release additional uh, tools. So Scouse Monkey is a simple tool that allows you to kill EC2 instances, to, to fill, de to detach volumes, to, to inject network failures at the proxy level, to burn CPU. And uh, there is a Kaus Kong, uh, which allows you to even to disconnect, uh, to create disconnection between different AWS regions. And I like the tool. So when I started my one of my projects uh, based on container two years ago, I actually wanted to use the tool, but it looks like wrong granularity tool. So I needed something not at VM level, but at container level. And I would, wanted to be able also to run uh, the cause test on even on developer machine, to create a failures on development machine that simulates network or or stability fellows. So, and uh, I went to search for Google, Chaos Monkey for Docker, and I didn't find anything. So I didn't find any, I found some bar script, some example, what people can do, common line, some advices, but nothing special for, for Docker or for container clusters. So I've started, I've created our own tool, tool and we, we started to use it in production and actually we, it was very simple at the very beginning. We contributed to open source as a in friendly license uh, and people start to contribute back in terms of enhancement requests and issues and uh, PRs. So it's actually not a, a cow's monkey, it's cow's warthog. It's called Pumba, so for those who don't remember who is Pumba is. <laughs> so. Please don't leave me. Problem. Hey, who's the pig? Are you talking to me? Uh-oh, they call him the pig. Are you talking to me? He shouldn't have done that. Are you talking to me? Now they're in for it. They call me Mr. Pig! <laughs> so... What is Pumba? As you see, it's a, it's a well known supporting character from the Disney picture Lion King. And in Swahili, it also means uh, to behave, to be foolish, silly, weak minded, careless, neglected person. So, very suitable for this kind of project. And it's also an open source uh, project for cost testing uh, for Docker containers. Uh, it's hosted on GitHub. If you search for Pumba GitHub, you will find it there. It's written in Go, so it's a cross-platform, cross-architecture. It's available for, for, as binary for, for every platform and also as Docker image. Uh, what Pumba can do? Uh, Pumba actually disturbs the uh, Docker runtime environment, uh, injecting different kinds of failures. It, uh, you can specify the victim containers by providing name or name list or regular expression. You can also add additional random, randomness to calls by using random flag. It's, it's possible to uh, define repeatable time interval, uh, how, how often Pumba is actually acting, running and duration for, for how long it will to d disturb your, your Docker environment. And this way will allow you to better control the cows. And Pumba can disturb either a single Docker host, a swarm cluster, a Kubernetes cluster. It can connect to local machine, to remote machine with TLS defined. So well, what type of commands uh, you have there, you can uh, stop running Docker containers, you can kill or send any termination signal to main process within Docker container. You can just remove a container with all their links and volumes. Or pause uh, processes which are running inside container for a specific period of time. 
So let, let's take a look at the demo. Here I start some containers that do nothing. I believe I need to, to increase the font. So I'm starting seven containers called test one to test seven, just tailing to dev null. So they're not doing nothing, they're sitting there. Maybe I'll add some additional container under different name. Uh, when I'm going to, to okay, so I see this container up and running. Seven containers I've created from test one to seven, and some additional container. I'm going to run Pumba command. Okay, I'm going to randomly kill one of these uh, containers based on regular expression. Uh, in every three seconds, I will select the next victim and kill it. So that's what's going to happen right now. We will see the container, uh, test container will start to exit one by one. And within a couple of uh, seconds, they all will be exited beside the one that uh, doesn't match the, the pattern, okay? Okay, all of them exit. So other examples, for example, uh, you can stop random container once in 10 minutes by using random command and interval command and sending a six stop signal to, to, the, to any container running on the same host. <coughs> or you can, in this example, you are every 15 minutes you kill MySQL container and every hour, hour uh, just remove container starting with the CF based on regular expression. Or here you can randomly, for example, uh, kill a worker container and uh, once in three minutes pause the queue container they work against. Just enter pause it for, for 16 seconds. So using these uh, commands together, you can create different failure scenarios where suddenly some applications, some containers start to crash because of lack of resources or uh, problem within the program itself, or maybe uh, the, the process currently blocked, so you can simulate all these kind of failures. Beside uh, working with container and processes within container, Pumba can also uh, do a network emulation uh, for, for Docker containers. So it can emulate some network failures at container level, level including uh, filter by specific IP. So only traffic that's going to specific IP will be affected. It can delay ingress traffic for specified container. It can add a packet loss based on different probability loss models like uh, Markov, Gilbert, and Bernoulli. It can, you can also define a rate limit for ingress traffic to simulate, uh, si simulate like uh, different bandwidths, uh, like white area networks bandwidths or cel cellular network. And uh, some examples here for common, so you have a special NetM command, so it's called Pumba NetM duration five minutes and you introduce delay for three seconds, it's in milliseconds, for three seconds to my, my DB container. So every traffic will be delayed for three seconds. Uh, you can also, to add some randomness to, to delay operation, for example, you can specify the, the exact interface, network interface you would like to affect, for example, using interface command. I'm selecting ETH1 
uh, I specify delay of uh, three seconds with jitter of plus minus 30 milliseconds and correlation 20% between uh, each next, uh, next delay value. Also introducing a distribution flag where you can select a specific uh, distribution loss model. Under the hood, uh, Pumba Net Netem um, uses a kernel traffic control with network emulation queue dis discipline. So kernel, Linux kernel has a native framework for routing and fire uh, firewall and address translation. Uh, and you have a traffic control that actually all traffic, ingress traffics come through it. And it, it can apply the different uh, queuing discipline to this traffic, to this packet that arrives. One of the basic disciplines is FIFO, like first packet arrive, first packet that exit. But there are some others. And NETM, NETM queue discipline allows you to actually insert different kind of network failures inside uh, into uh, this network communication to, to ingress traffic. And that's what Pumba is using. Okay. It connects to the uh, container, target container and network namespace. It actually uses uh, this tool with uh, NetM uh, queuing discipline. In case uh, there is no TC tools in Docker image, it knows how to bring the Docker image from outside and connect it spin off the side container and connect it to the target container namespace and thus uh, create these uh, errors. So some demo for network emulation. Okay. So I'm going to I'm, doc I'm going to run, just, yeah, I'll increase it a bit. I'm running a pink command inside the uh, Alpine container. Maybe it's uh, visible, yeah. hope so. <laughs> and I'm going And I'm going to, to add a delay of uh, three seconds to, to this container with a jitter 50, meaning uh, plus minus 50 milliseconds and di normal distribution. Also use the, since the basic Alpine image doesn't contain TC utility, I also run a side container with TC utility on board. So, sorry. So you can see the, the pink suddenly slowed down. So it, it was around 200 and right now it's 3,000 and something okay, milliseconds. And when Pumba is finished, the, the connection is restored. So the pink uh, behaves normally. I'll show another demo. This one is recorded. It's a bit more complex. I would like to add a packet loss. So here I have two containers uh, running. One is run, r using iperf2 uh, benchmark tools. Uh, on the left side, I run a server. On the right side, I run a client. Client sends uh, packets to the server through UDP. It's, and you can see that it no, there is no packet loss. You have a zero packet lost in datagrams sent from client to server. So right now I'm going to run the network emulation and adding a packet loss of 20% and start to send once again data from client to server so you can see that some datagrams are not arriving. So there is a packet lost in datagram. And when Pumba exit, uh, everything is restored. So if I run the client again, I see zero packet loss. Okay, this was the demo. And let me go back to the slide. Yes. 
So Pumba is an open source project, and I will be glad if you give it a try and report issues, suggest enhancement, uh, maybe contribute to PRs so we can work together on this project. And if you have questions, I'm ready to answer now or after that. Thank you.